taking my purse off and um, my coat off and my girlfriend just standing there, right? She looked at me like, damn, they about to take her purse and her coat. I'm looking at her like, bitch, you think they gonna let you walk away? share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you have not already joined our Bella Book Club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and for a small $5 monthly fee, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it if YouTube gets it. Now, let's do our story time with me and BFF, child. That time I got robbed. So, I told you guys, as you know, I am from Washington, D.C., proud alumni of the University of District of Columbia, Go Fibers. And, oh, yeah, guys, I, I am trying to recover from a migraine. So, I don't know how funny this is going to be. Okay. Uh, it's even 1990, I would say. And at the time, me and BFF was so inseparable. It was crazy. Me and BFF are, like, always inseparable somehow. You know, it's crazy that I could move, you know, and BFF would be like, well, where you move to? I'd be like, uh, we live in George Washington Carver Apartments. She'd be like, oh, shit, I live around the corner. You know, the universe has put us two together like that. But anyway, we were inseparable. If I wasn't with her and her at her aunt's house over in Michigan Park, then she was with me uh, uptown on Morton Street. We've been together since kindergarten, okay? Since, yeah, since kindergarten at uh, Holy Redeemer, okay? Around there when I was living in certain quarters, right? I told you that D.C. is pretty much a walking city, okay? Um, yeah, you could basically walk from, like, uh, uh, where we lived at on uh, Morton Street, all the way down to the Popeyes at, at 7th in Florida. Or is that 7th in you? Whatever the case may be, always. You know, and not be bothered. Now, going from the 80s turning into the 90s, that was a different type of juice. Niggas is doing different kind of things now, right? And we learned that the hard way. BFF right. wakes up and be like, look, I got to give something to eh, eh, eh. Let's go over there and give it to her. I'm like, well, do you want to catch a cab? She's like, no, nah, it's all right. We both got coats and stuff. We good. Let's just walk there. So we put on our coats and our coach bags because back then coaches was the shit, okay? I put on my good coat, child. I had got it from the Limited. And back then, the best dressed women on TV were um, from Martin, what's the Tashina Honor, Arnold and Tisha Campbell, those two, Pam and I forgot, Gina. Best dressed women on television. You heard me. All of us wanted to dress like Pam and Gina. And how you could do it affordably, even though the limited clothing was a little bit more expensive too, is to shop at the limited. And you know your girl made sure that she had a whole part-time job at the limited so she could stay fly. You know, things are changing. You heard me. It's the 90s. The early 90s. Motherfuckers ain't got no more integrity no more. It is the, I don't know, the land of the lost in the D.C., okay, and we found that out the hard way. So we walking, right? Now, we just passed, I think is it's it, we was on 10th Street, walking up 10th Street because we needed to get to those houses around there. Now, we get on 12th Street. We see some dudes sitting on the, like, this cobblestone you know, like brick fence thing, okay? And I ain't in the mood. I don't feel like being talked to. I really don't, you know, leave me alone. Now we, me and me and my Judy, have no clue what's getting ready to happen. We're okay. passing the two dudes now, you know? Good, they ain't trying to talk to us, keep on moving. You know, we got shit to do. We trying to hurry up and get back, 
right? We pass them. Why as they're sitting on that little brick fence thingy, right? Next minute I hear is, give me your purse. Give me my purse. I turn around like, what? Turn around as a pistol in my face, right? I don't know. Fuck. Now, this ain't the first time I've been robbed. This is definitely the first time that my Judy had been robbed, you know? Because like I said, she didn't live in the hood. And it's so funny because her ass is ghetto as fuck. She, whatever interaction she had with the hood, it was probably through me, Okay. Or some dude that she was fucking with that she met through me. I turned around and the pistol in my face. I'm like, oh, fuck, we getting robbed. Now, that's what I'm saying. He said, coat too. I said, fuck, not my limited coat. Not my coat from the limited. And I'm saying it to myself, but I know when people got them damn pistols in their face, you don't play no games. First thing you do is you just give it up. Ain't no reason to talk. Ain't no reason to ah, 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 you know. I, I ain't no superhero for all that shit. I ain't got magic powers. Just give it up. I'm taking my purse off. And um, my coat off, and my girlfriend just standing there, right? She looking at me like, damn, they about to take her purse and her coat. I'm looking at her like, bitch, you think they going to let you walk away? Are you crazy? And then, of course, the other one, because it was two of them, put that thing on her and was like, you too. Dropped everything on the ground. And he say, all right, bye. Or one of them say, all right, bye, the initiator, the, the head robber. I'm turning around, I'm walking. They don't even make them damn coats no more. I can get another coach bag, because, you know, they always keep the same, you know, bags. They don't really do too much, you know. But anyway, I was like, fuck! I can't even get that damn limited coat back no more. Niggas! So, I guess we was taking too long, because I was walking mad, okay? I don't know what the bad walking looked like, child, but I was doing okay? He said, pop, pop, hurry up, run, run. Oh, I heard them pops. I said, oh, shit, they shoot. Pew, 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 pew. But, you know, I, I, I think that's just, you know, that's just the procedure of robbing motherfuckers. You want to hurry up and get their asses out there, okay, because they sitting around, you know, because they need to make another uh, interaction. You know, they need you to get out the way so that they can, Pounce on some other suspecting person, or I don't know. I don't know robbery et etiquette. Okay. So like I said, my Judy never really lived in the ghetto, okay? Me, on the other hand, because I'm from 640, I did. I'm, well, actually, I'm from Southwest. I forget the name of the area that they would call it from Southwest that I grew up in. You know, my little brother and me both lived in Southwest. Didn't serve some quarters. And then turned around and moved to, like, well, we went to Michigan Park first. And then when my uh, mom and my stepfather got divorced, we moved to Morton Street. So I still had friends in Michigan Park, you know, certain quarters, everywhere. I still had people that I grew up with, okay? So I was comfortable maneuvering in certain areas, right? But me and her thought differently, okay? Although she was my Judy and she was with me in these hood places that I lived, we thought differently. So when we got to our destination, first thing my Judy started doing was crying and, oh, they took my coat. Oh, they took my purse. And I'm quiet. I mean, she is really in her feelings. Me, I never been really like an emotional type. It really has to be bothering me a lot. But because I'm from the hood and I know shit like that happens all the time, it's just so happened that I just was the victim this time, you know, that, um, and this ain't my first time being robbed, that it really didn't affect me, affect me the same way. Child, the destination was like her family too. Them motherfuckers, it's like, oh my God, we must call the police. I'm like, damn, they about to call the police. In the hood, you never call the police. Never. Like I said, when I was young and I was going to private school and I was living around there to the Michigan Park, okay, it's officer friendly. Okay, yes, they is your friend. You call the police when you need help. But when you on Moy Street and you seeing if he's robbing the little young boys, you don't trust them motherfuckers. I say, okay. oh God, they gonna make me talk to the police. God damn. The police came. Everybody shook. Everybody sitting there shook. They consoling her. They trying to console me. I'm like, I'm fine. We good. People are consoling her. Everybody shaking. Oh, they had a gun. Oh my God, are you okay? That is so traumatizing. I'm sitting there like, uh, my God, I'm gonna have to go buy me a new coat, you know, but I'm not traumatized. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not because shit like that happens in the hood all the fucking time, right? So 
Not that I was getting all this, robbed all the time, but stuff like that happens, you know, and you just resolve it yourself or you understand that. And I understood that calling the police is going to do what? From being a criminal justice major, they tell you that it's just, you know, 90% of the times your solves don't, your, your crime does not get solved. Okay, it's just a memo that they're taking down so that maybe they can attach it to somebody else just for statistical purposes. That's it. When the police got there, oh God, child, my Judy, she made a, you know, she talked to the police, you know, oh, what happened to me? Why, dog, why? Damn, Judy, you can't handle the pressure. Damn, girl, I gotta stop taking you out with me. Okay, police caller, cop caller. They took her report. They asked me, did I want to make a report? I didn't. I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't. You know, I didn't want to go through. I didn't. But they asked me questions. You know, I answered those questions. But do you want to put something on paper? No, because it's gone. You know, let's do this. My Judy, not BFF, but my Judy... She started messing with this dude, okay? My Judy, matter of fact, I was there when she met her dude, okay? We had the Fridays in Greenbelt, right? Okay. And my Judy got a propensity to make out with men when she like them, okay? So she made out with him. I don't know where them motherfuckers went together. They could have went around back together. I don't know, but they finna get married now. When we finally got together and we, you know, went to the bar and everything and I was telling him where I'm from. He was like, oh yeah, I'm from 12th Street, Northeast. I said, oh shit. Now, my Judy don't understand what the hell is going on, okay? She laughing, he laughing, he don't get it. I said, oh, you must not be one of them. He was like, what you talking about, Nate? I said, because 12th Street ain't known for nothing but stick-up boys. And I just got paid today, nigga. And what you ain't going to do is steal my purse. I'm gone. Love bugs. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves you. Have a good one.